if we link this back to the more kind of philosophical way of thinking about the self, um, you know, like there in, in when people kind of, you know, have these kind of spiritual states, they can have the experience of looking at another person and basically feeling like you're me or like we're all we're all the same thing, like a, a deep kind of connection yeah. of, of your sense of self expanding to everything. Um, so it feels like there's a kind of continuum here from, from being like, you know, I am really what's important versus we're all in this together and we're all equally important. And that's, so when you start getting to those issues of connection and altruism and reaching beyond the self to the other, I mean, even in the social psych literature, you start going to those more Eastern ideas that maybe we're both the same. So it's, uh, you you know this stuff and I don't, so please jump in and correct me at any time. But I, I think... I think Schopenhauer once described it like we think all these people are separate, but it really they're like characters in the same dream. So it's like there's one dreamer with these different characters. And when you have that breakthrough, like looking at an aspen grove, like in, in the U.S., we have these aspen groves that look like they're all these trees, but they really are one tree underneath because they run off runners. When you when you see the world that way and you start realizing that myself includes yourself being selfish for me, I have to be selfish for you too. That has to break down the narcissistic, I mean, it has to break down the whole process in a way if your self expands to something else. We've, I mean, we've tried to do this in the lab a little bit, you know, um, but but theoretically it, it should work. I, I don't know, this, this, it gets, it get, uh, this stuff gets really hard because, um, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I've got too many things. So like uh, one psychologist, Art Aaron, really got into this from a yogic perspective. So he got into this idea of self-expansion, which is, you know, I fall in love with somebody, but it's really my, you know, I'm my Atman's connecting to their self and that's so I'm expanding when I connect with them. And he really came at it from this perspective. The problem is when you start taking that, you know, you start looking at narcissism and spiritual traditions, you, you, you see a lot of ego inflation. So the recent research that just come out, I mean, uh, Ruth Funk just had a paper from the Netherlands on this. So I've seen others, um, but people who can sometimes get into spiritual work, especially energy work, you can become very ego inflated because you're like, I'm a guru, I'm enlightened. So some of this stuff can be really risky for narcissism, even though it seems like it should be a solution to it. Yeah, I think that's a particular risk with um, the kind of psychedelic renaissance that we're seeing because it's such a shortcut to to those spiritual states that someone in 20 minutes could have a an experience that, and then, you know, a narcissist could basically say, great, I've banked that, now I can go off and be a guru because um, I had a, a glimpse of what it's like to be beyond the ego. I... Um... I, I think that as well. And we've, you know, we've started to look at some psychedelic work with narcissism. And it's, it, it's really interesting when I, and this is my student Brandon's work, uh, Brandon Weiss, give him credit, I don't want to steal it. Um, we really see the psychedelics, and this is ayahuasca that we've been looking at, really seem to be beneficial for neuroticism like helping people who are suffering with anxiety or depression or trauma. That seems to be like where the clear benefit is. Narcissism is just not as clear what's going on. Because on one hand, there's this idea that if you have an awe experience, if you have the vision of the Gita, you see that you're this small thing in this infinite universe, your ego is going to get smaller after that and you're going to get more humble. But then you walk out the door of the Maloka and two days later, you're telling your bros how you saw God and they're like, you're cool. And you're like, yeah, because I saw God and you didn't. I'm the coolest. So I might be smaller than God, but I'm bigger than all of you little ants. And so it's a risky, it's a risky thing. I, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, I, I mean, I, I tell everybody, uh, people want gurus. They want gurus. People want someone with the answer. And the problem is it's very easy for people narcissistic to jump up and say, yeah, I'll give you the answer. You want the answer, I'll give you the answer. And so in most traditions, there's a mechanism to weed that out. So if you go through academics, you have a mentor and you've got a PhD process and not that we weed out egomaniacs and academics. Sometimes we encourage it, but at least we know there's a process, a vetting process to get a PhD. If you go 
if you go into plant medicine and you go work with the Shipibo and you do diets and you practice for spend a few years down there, it's like you kind of know what you're doing. If you have training, if you go to, you know, you go to India or Tibet back in the day and you do your, I don't know, your year in a cave, you've got your training. But nowadays you've got somebody who spends, a, like you said, you do a week in a cer ceremony. You're like, I'm a freaking shaman and then I'm going to go invade the White House. I'm like, dude, you, it's not a real shaman. <laughs> That's yeah. So I get worried with a lot of this stuff. Excited, yeah. but worried. Man. 